Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dominique Davis, also known as Brown and Bindi. And here on this channel, we practice flexibility of the mind, body, and spirit. I have not done my spiel in such a long time because as you know, we have been just doing the really laid back chill videos, but I decided to put a little bit of production, a little bit of effort into this one because it's really important and it's really special to me. You may see that my apartment, my house is more of a mess than it usually is. That is because I am moving. Please be kind, don't come for me. Okay, so today we are talking about how to start a yoga practice. One of my Instagram followers reached out to me. So this is for you, girl. She asked me how I started my yoga practice and whether I have any tips and tricks that I wanna share. And like all of these different ideas, all these different thoughts started coming up. So I was just like, I'll make a video. It's fine, I'll just make a video. So here we go. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is yoga? Because when a lot of people think about yoga, they think about the physical postures, but the physical postures are just one part of a whole practice. The physical postures are actually referred to as the asanas. Now, when people talk about yoga, you may hear them also referencing meditation. And that is because the actual literal transla translation of yoga is yoking the mind, body, and spirit. So we use meditation and we use mindfulness practices and we use the physical postures so that we can bring our mind, body, and spirit together, find flow, and find alignment. That whole process, that whole practice is yoga. Something that was really important for me to address in this video was the difference between spirituality and fitness when it comes to yoga. Because I think that those are the two biggest ways that we see yoga in our society. You hear yoga and you think of either someone meditating on a mountain chanting Om, or you think of hardcore Lululemon power yoga, <laughs> you know? Um, so I think that Personally, it depends on the person, what they need. Some people are really in their heads, so they pick up a power yoga practice because it helps them get out of their heads. Some people are afraid of going within, so they choose to pick up a more spiritual practice because they're choosing to illuminate what's going on inside of them. It really just depends on what you need. But personally, I like to practice both. I like to practice a balance of using yoga to explore myself, explore my physicality, and also using yoga to stay in shape. What's most important when considering yoga and fitness, at least to me, is always remembering that the purpose of yoga or one of the purposes of yoga is alignment. So mental and spiritual alignment, but also physical alignment. So if you choose to start a yoga practice and you want to jump into power yoga, that's fine. Do what feels good. But make sure that the body is aligned because what I see is a lot of athletes try to jump into doing power yoga because they are strong, because they already have a physical athletic practice. Um, but because they haven't practiced yoga and they haven't built a foundation with the um, more common asanas, they're doing these hardcore, very um, powerful flows without really understanding the foundations of the movement, therefore kind of forcing their bodies to do things that don't really feel natural quite yet. So if you feel pulled to start in the power yoga realm, I do highly encourage you to take a couple of weeks to just make sure that you know the basics, make sure you know how the basics feel within your body and research how to do poses correctly and how to do poses in a way that feel good. Accessible ways to start practicing. When I started practicing, I had a roommate who did yoga and she put me onto this app called Yoga Studio. And this was like in 2016. So there was, this was like in 2016. So the app was like $5.99. Now I believe it's $19.99 in the Apple store. That being said, to me, it's worth it. To me, it's worth it. 
because you own the app and two yoga classes, $10 each would be $20. And this one app has tons and tons and tons of classes from very beginner to intermediate to advanced. I think that is such a deal. I relied on this app for the entire first year of my practice. I started with the Yoga Studio app as well as doing Yoga by Adrian. It took a really long time to understand how the asanas feel within my body before I started to incorporate more advanced things into my practice. Again, yoga <laughs> is not a race. It's not an athletic sport. It's not about winning at yoga. <laughs> it's more so about connecting with the self. So um, I definitely recommend the yoga studio app so let's say that you've done yoga before like you maybe went to a few classes when you were in college or you've gone to a few classes with your friends you know the basics but you want to start a real practice i could also suggest aloe moves aloe moves is my go-to for practicing yoga right now it is just aloe yoga in general there's such an inspiration to me and my yoga practice and the classes that they offer online, the teachers that they have, not only like not only are they inspirational, but they know what they're talking about. I have not done one class on aloe yoga where the teacher does not know how to cue in a way that translates to me. Bring the right toes back towards the face. As you exhale, keep all of that space you created and fold a little deeper. With your inhale, you're gonna rise, reaching the left hand back behind you, left fingertips point back, lift onto the left knee, reach the right hand. Everyone has a different body. So it's really important when you start to go to classes, when you start to watch classes online, it's really important that your yoga teacher is communicating in a way that you understand so you can start to learn where you need to shift your weight so you can start to learn where you need to release tension it's really important that your teacher knows how to communicate those things to you so that's what i love about aloe moves all the teachers are super educated and super good at communicating the last accessible way i would say you can start a practice is by suggesting one of my <sighs> one of my best friends and one of my favorite people in the world. Her name is Sandy Raper and she goes by Sandy Raper Yoga. You can find her on Instagram. She has been teaching for over, I think it's like 19 years now. She's been teaching for over 19 years and she teaches in a way that is all about functionality. I tell people a lot, start a yoga practice today. Start it today because if you Notice that it is getting more and more difficult for you to stretch, more and more difficult for you to be mobile. That's because the body is aging. So yoga really helps us keep our bodies young, keep our bodies functional. And you don't have to be doing handstands and splits to say that you have a yoga practice. But, but just by incorporating functional movement, you can feed your body what it needs to stay young and happy. So that's what I love about how Sandy teaches. She teaches in a way that immediately communicates to the body today what it needs. In contrast to aloe yoga, where aloe yoga can train you on how to do some of the more, um, I guess we could say, I don't want to say difficult. I don't want to put that label on it, but aloe yoga can train you on how to prepare to do the more intense stuff have a little bit more of an intense practice if that's for you but what i love about how sandy teaches is that she meets you where you are she communicates with you where you are and you can grow so much within your practice after just one of her classes no matter what level that you're at so i will put her information in the description box because she's just amazing and she does teach live yoga classes if you just wanted to start today so there's that props <laughs> props if you are thinking about starting a yoga practice and you're about to go buy a mat definitely you need a mat to start but what you also need are yoga props so i would recommend two yoga blocks and one yoga strap 
The thing I love about yoga is that it really breaks down the ego. There's a saying within the yoga community and it is practice and all is coming because no matter how long you practice, there will always be more to learn. It doesn't really serve a person to pick up a yoga practice with a goal of, again, that winning mindset, that conquering mindset. There's nothing to conquer in yoga. There's nothing to conquer in yoga. Yes, you can have milestones. Yes, you can work towards things, but there's no winning <laughs> in yoga. And the reason I say all of this is because props are so important at the beginning. Props are so important at the beginning because a lot of times, if you haven't really been too physical, a lot of the asanas can wake up parts of your body that you haven't really spoken to in a long time, that you haven't really loved on in a long time. And yoga is not about forcing it, okay? You should never feel any pinching in yoga. You should never feel any pain in yoga. It should feel good. It should feel like expansion. Yes, yeah, sometimes expansion is uncomfortable. You can feel uncomfortable, but it should never be painful. So what props do is props allow us to feel the same sensation that fully expressing a pose would allow us to feel. But sometimes fully expressing that pose can be painful because our, we might need to gain a little bit more flexibility. We might need to grow a little bit before we can really get there. So what props helps us do is props help us flow. Props help us learn and grow without all that pressure of saying, I need to be able to touch my toes right now. I need to be able to have my heels down in downward facing dog. You know, props take all of that away. So props and straps are so important for starting a yoga practice and making sure that you're comfortable from day one. While we're on the subject of props, I would also like to mention that modifications are very, very important as well. So if you are in a yoga class, if you are taking a yoga class online and you find that you are losing steam and you are just becoming very overwhelmed because you feel like you can't do anything, start modifying. You can modify using props. Or you can modify by just doing a different pose altogether that would help the same areas of the body. For example, downward facing dog. Downward facing dog is really good for opening the shoulders and pushing the hands out in front so that we can feel the connection from our shoulders to our hands. You can also get that same feeling in tabletop, right? Those are two different poses, but they give us the same sensation. So modifications while practicing are also a very big help. There is no winning in yoga. There is no, I finally did this. I'm finally better than I was before. No, it's all a journey. It's all a fluid journey if you let it be. So go ahead and put modifications in your practice and give yourself permission to use modifications and to use props because that way, instead of you being so in your mind, oh my God, this hurts. Oh my God, how much longer do I have to hold this? Oh my God, I can't breathe. Instead of you being so much in your head, you can actually find ways to get through the practice in a fluid way while still doing poses, variations, modifications, using props to make sure that you're still activating the same muscles without overextending yourself because it's never necessary. What you can't do today you might be able to do next month or next year. Practice and all is coming, okay? There's no reason to try to force it today. Have an open mind and meet yourself where you are. That's another beautiful thing about yoga. It really helps us come to terms with where we are in the moment and be content with where we are in the moment because we're always perfect. You're perfect where you are right now. Even though if you're watching this and you haven't started a practice yet, you're still perfect where you are right now. Okay, so when you start your practice, it won't make you any more perfect. It's just another way to connect to yourself. It's another way to connect to your body, your mind, and your spirit. Okay, really quick, we have a QA. and a I did not get too many questions, but I did decide that I think I wanna try to do a FaceTime video or something with Sandy. So if you guys have more questions after this video, just leave questions in the comments and I will try to do another follow-up video to this with Sandy because she has so much more experience than me and she's one of my mentors. So I would love to bring her on here to answer your questions. So leave your questions down below. 
So the first question I got was, how did you decide that yoga was for you? Um, I don't know if I decided or if it was just all that I was able to do. <laughs> I my, my yoga practice really started about a month after I had AJ, which was in 2017. I couldn't go running. I couldn't go to the gym. There wasn't a lot that I could do. And I remember I found this postpartum yoga flow on YouTube and I was hooked. The second question is how often do you do yoga? Every single day. Because if, you're, if you are meditating, you're doing yoga. If you are taking five minutes to just stretch your arms, stretch your neck, roll your shoulders, you're doing yoga. Now the actual like, how often do I spend an hour practicing? Every other day, every other day. Um, sometimes it'll be stints of every day, but definitely every other day or I will start to lose my mind. The last question I have is, do you have any recommendations for a person who is heavier set? YouTube does not work for me, which what I think she means is watching videos on YouTube, yoga videos, it's just too much. I get it, oh my God. <laughs> I started with this channel called Five Parks Yoga. And I started with this channel <laughs> and it, oh, I almost died. <laughs> I could do it now and it would be an intense, wonderful workout. Um, I don't even know if I'd make it all the way through, I'm not gonna lie. But I tried to start with that and I almost fell out. So like, <laughs> I get it. So when it comes to having more weight, something that you want to 100% always be conscious of is your alignment, especially in your wrist, your wrist and your shoulders. That's to start. Um, now, when it comes to practicing on YouTube, I think you can practice on YouTube. I think you can practice anything because once you start to use your props and once you start to do modifications, you can do any practice at any time. There's a pose called Balasana or child's pose, which is a resting pose. So if you're doing a flow and it becomes too much, put that ego aside and get into Balasana. And I think that when people hear props, when people hear variations, the ego starts speaking up like, I should be able to do this. I don't need help. I can do it myself. And that's something that is very showing, you know? And I think that when you start a yoga practice, if your ego starts to speak up a lot, you already have your very first thing that you're working out on your yoga journey. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't stray away from YouTube because there are so many great resources on YouTube. But what I would more so say is educate yourself on the variations that work for you, on the props that work for you, so that while you are practicing, if something comes along and you're just like, this does not feel good, you can go to a variation, you can go to a modification or use your props so that you can still experience the class in a way that feels good to you. That is the end of our Q&A session. So before we end this video, I want to introduce a new segment that I would like to include once a week. And that would be comment of the week because you guys leave such awesome baller comments that I wanna share them with the rest of the Bendy Vibe Tribe. So this comment is from Troy Ellis and it says, new to your channel, but one powerful message or thread that runs through your videos is being careful about what you ask for. You hold true to the reality that attaining and maintaining your high frequency in your life will create a dream life. The conscious mind is the captain, but the ship, the subconscious, does the grunt work of getting us there. Love your wavelength, which is an extension of your clean, focused thinking. No accidents in our fragment of the universe. Just talking about how the reminder, how important the reminder is that everything, everything is a result of that inner story, that inner monologue that we have going on in our head. So thank you so much for that, Troy. Make sure that you guys are leaving comments so that you can get a chance to be featured in comment of the week. All right, you guys, that is it for today's video. I am so grateful for you. I'm so grateful that you are here. If you made it all the way to the end, make sure you leave a heart down below. Just let me know. I just wanna know who watched it all the way through. I'm just, I'm just wondering. I'm just curious. Um, if you wanna be around for my next video, make sure that you are subscribed. If you click the notification bell, YouTube will let you know when my next video comes out. Make sure to leave a thumbs up so YouTube knows that this video is valuable and that they should recommend it to other people. 
And yeah, that's it. Keep your vibrations high. Ignore whatever doesn't have to do with the journey, with the goal, where you want to be. If it doesn't have to do with that, just brush it away. Brush it away. And I hope that you have the best week because I love you. And I will see you next video. Bye.